When we are talking about rainfall, we need to define two important terms. Number one is rainfall depth. I'm going to write it over here. And number two is rainfall intensity. Rainfall depth tells you the amount of rainfall received. It has the units of length, so can be expressed in millimeters or in inches. Rainfall intensity or rate tells you how intense a rainfall is. In other words, the depth of rainfall over a specific period of time. So it can be expressed in millimeters per hour or any other unit of time or inches per hour. In the United States, rainfall intensities can be classified into light, moderate, and heavy rainfall. A light rainfall has intensity of less than 0.1 inches per hour. A moderate rainfall has the intensity between 0.1 to 0.3 inches per hour, and a heavy rainfall has the intensity greater than 0.3 inches per hour. Now, let me ask you a quick question, an important question. Do you think heavy rainfall events are shorter or longer than light rainfall events? Another question is, what is the frequency of heavy rainfall events? I'm sure that you have a correct instinctive understanding that very heavy rainfall events are normally short and light rainfall events are normally long or longer. In hydrology, you can derive a set of functions or equations or curves to show the relationship among intensity, duration, and frequency of rainfall events. It's called IDF functions or IDF curves. I stands for intensity, D stands for duration, and F stands for frequency. Let's take a look at the general form of these curves. So, if I have x-axis like this and y-axis like this, x-axis would be duration, y-axis is intensity, and different curves represent different um, return periods or frequencies. So you might have curves like this, which represent return period, or annual exceedance probability. All right, let's talk about return period and annual exceedance probability. The United States Geological Survey refers to the percent chance of occurrence of a rainfall as an annual exceedance probability, which is always a fraction of one. For example, a storm or a rainfall event with annual exceedance probability of 0.5 has 50% chance of occurring in any given year. The return period of a storm is the inverse of the exceedance probability. So if return period is expressed using letter P, capital P, if, sorry, if exceedance probability is expressed as uh, capital letter P, return period can be expressed as capital letter T. Now, T, or return period, is 1 over P over here. Um, let's go back to our example. The annual exceedance probability of the rainfall was 0, 0 0.5. Therefore, the return period of the rainfall will be 1 over 0 0.5 or 2 years. 1 over 0 0.5 or 2 years. But how to interpret the return period is a bit tricky. In our example, the return period is two years. This tells you that in any given two-year period, 
the two-year storm or rainfall event occurs at least once. This is how you interpret this number. Let me give you another example. Um, let's interpret a 100-year storm. So we're going to interpret a 100-year rainfall event or storm. So this would be T or the return period of that. This tells you that in any given 100-year period, the 100-year storm or 100-year rainfall event occurs at least once. And the exceedance probability of a 100-year storm is 1 over 100. Why? Because if T is equal to 1 over P, then P is equal to 1 over T. So 1 over 100 would be 0.01, which is the annual exceedance probability. Now, if you want to interpret that in percent, it would be 1%. So this tells you that a 100-year storm, basically, in other words, in any given year, there is 1% chance of occurring. Now you might ask, how do we select these return, these return periods? That's a great question. The return period of a design storm or rainfall is based on either a regulatory requirement by states or based on economic efficiency criteria. All right, this is part one of the video. In part two, you will learn how to interpret these IDF curves.